What is that? The Cretaceous period. I mean, this thing is a hundred thing. Hey, check this out. How much did you pay for this? This is amazing. <laughs> well, thirty dollars. Let me introduce you to two thousand eight. So it's 2008 and you are a professional photographer or video editor and you need to get the best machine that money can buy from Apple. And this would have been it, 2008 Mac Pro dual processor with an MSRP of over $4,000. Can we still use this in 2024? So here it is, the 2008 Mac Pro. Wasn't familiar with this at all. I've seen these for sale many times over the years, but they all kind of look the same. And I was under the impression that they were too old to really do anything. I found this one for $30 on OfferUp, missing a few parts. So let's take a look at it. So at first glance to me, not knowing anything about these, it looks like a PC. Typical front ports. Let's go to the back. I like this grill design. Big fan here. There's your GPU and ports. The I guess the 06, 07, 08, various generations have the same chassis. So this is a 2008 3,1. And let's take a look inside. Whoa, it's a serious lever there. There's the lock. You can lock it so, so nobody will steal your sensitive data. So we unlock this guy and pull this off. And let's take a look at what's inside. Okay, we're inside and this actually looks almost exactly like a Dell XPS, right? The old one that I did the video about with the backwards motherboard. So we have this Radeon, which I looked up is an XT1900 or 1900 XT. You can put another graphics card in there. Or um, not sure what for, for video editing, I guess. It's got two big fans right here. I guess one's for the video card. Ones for the CPUs, which are under here, and also cooling the memory. And I did look up videos about these before I bought one, because I was trying to research and find out what the big deal was. Actually, there's another fan here. Yeah, that, there is a lot of fans on this thing. Anyway, I'm sure you already know this, but these pop out. This is the RAM tray. And you can put tons of RAM in here, I think 100 gigabytes or something. Uh, this one has memory in it, it has 12 gigs that was advertised. This tray is empty. So we can put RAM in here and go up to whatever we can. and a bunch of slots and supposedly the um, power supply on this 
is 900 watts. So that's kind of crazy. It's in there. I thought there was two power supplies, but I guess there's just one there because you need that much power to be able to run two GPUs and then four hard drives. So this one is missing the trays. There would normally be a tray. You just pull it out and the, the hard drives just pop in and out like that. But uh, this one doesn't have it, so that's okay. We're just gonna try a couple of SSDs in there. And we have to take this off, I think, to get in here. I wanna see the, the heat sinks for the CPU. Supposedly there's two Xeons in here. And then uh, we'll clean it up. The goal for this, I was thinking, you know, these used to be pretty handy video editing machines back in the old days. And the people that I've talked to that used to have one said it was great for that. And I'm wondering if we can build kind of a legacy video editing machine, maybe with an older version of video editing software, and then just have SSDs instead of hard drives and see how it runs and then find some sort of better GPU. And for me, I don't actually use a PC to edit videos or a computer. So it'd be nice to have a, an actual video editing machine and learn how to do editing properly. So, yeah, let's see if we can get in here. Here's the memory tray popped out and the GPU with the obligatory lady on the side. I'm not sure why they do that in a system you can't see inside of, but anyway. And then there's the memory with the heat sinks. And also to be noted, this uses the mini PCI Express connectors. So you have to buy the adapter in order to put a newer standard type of graphics card in here. And then we just have to figure out how to mount the hard drives. So here are the two CPUs. Dual 2.8. You can put 3.2 gigahertz, I guess, in here. There's some screws down there that hold these on. I don't know if I'm gonna go that far, I think. Just wanna make it work first. Get the uh, nicest GPU I can find for this. You have to use a special Mac one, apparently. If you don't use a Mac GPU, then you won't get a boot screen until it actually boots. So I might use a PC one to start with, but I would like to have the proper appropriate GPU. A lot of fans here. I almost kind of want to get rid of this and just put normal fans, but I don't know if that would cause an error. No, because it's not detecting the the original fans. But yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, again, this is a 3-1. The nicer one is the 5-1, which has the CPU tray that pulls out. So on the 5-1, the CPUs are here and you can just pull out the tray and you can access the CPUs easily. But that one's still kind of expensive. Anyway, 30 bucks, pretty good. Uh, let's try and boot it up. And then we gotta order the cables. I guess I'm just gonna tape the SSDs to the top for now. And then look for this. I believe that's where the Wi Fi would go, or a card. All right, let's boot it up. And here she is, finally booted up after much protest. Took me a, a few attempts to get this High Sierra on here. I was doing something wrong, you know. So basically, if you follow the instructions correctly, you won't have a problem, but 
I thought I was ahead of the game and I forgot to do a couple of steps and so now we're in. So I found a 500 gigabyte SSD laying around that we put in and here it is. Mac Pro. Doesn't say which one here. Two 2.8 quad core Intel Xeon. 12 gigabytes, 8,800 megahertz DDR2. And the ATI Radeon X1900 XT. This seems to be a common problem. I have to look up how to fix that. This should be 256 or 512. And also the video is very slow right now. I don't know if that has something to do with the, uh, the patching or not. And we're not going to go over how to install it. There's plenty of tutorials for that. Also, there is no Wi-Fi. It looks like there was a spot for it in the little mini PCIe slot, but it's not there. So no internet yet. And let's see. More storage. Plenty more space for memory. I think the entire second tray is empty. So that could be upgraded. Um, so far so good. I can't really use it yet. I went with High Sierra because I figured that's the one that would be the most, um, like can you say, compatible with such an old machine. Also, I'm a little bit more familiar with Sierra. And that's what I used for iCloud unlocks, and so I was um, getting decent at command line options and terminal commands and disabling and adding hacks and stuff like that. So I think we'll just stay here for now. So 3 1 quad cores. So this goes up to, I'm not sure, at least 3 gigahertz, right? I don't know if I'll go that far, but uh, if I can find those cheap, I would. And that's it. And then we just have to find a decent graphics card. Apparently the um, GTX 600 and 700 series play nicely with this model, which is a bummer because I had one and I sold it. <laughs> so too bad about that. I do have a 960, but I don't know if it's too new for this. I have to ask around. If the 960 would work, then I would just use that one because I'm having trouble selling it anyway and I only paid $25 for it. And the goal here, like I said before, is um, I wonder if we can just make this into a little light editing machine. Because I don't have one right now. And every time I use my personal gaming build machines, I keep having to move my hard drive from machine to machine, and it would be nice to just have one that was dedicated to just doing work. So, stay tuned, we'll have another episode once we get this thing upgraded. Thanks for watching.